It's Lily Amanda for Portrait Creatives. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to match color differences between photos when doing a composite photo in Photoshop. There are quite a different ways you can do in Photoshop in order to match colors. And I'm going to show you the methods and you can experiment sometimes different scenario, you need a different method. And I'm going to show you all of them and you can try it out when you do a composite photo and you find the color has a huge difference. And these are the methods that will help you out to identify how do you adjust the color? And the fifth way is my favorite way, is eyeballing it. Okay, so let's go into Photoshop. So now we're in Photoshop, and for this example, I'm trying to cut out Christine and to paste on this landscape photo. Okay, it was original with a person in it, and I cut it out, and I'm going to place Christine in this photo. And if you want to know how to cut out the objects, like, from this photo to this photo. There's another tutorial I will include in the link in the description. And also this photo, Christine, I already cut her out. If you want to know how I did it, I will also include the tutorial link in the description. I also want to include the shadow part of this area into the composite photo. This is very important if you can include shadow into your composite photo, do include them, okay? This is very, very important because that will make your life so much easier and you will look instantly realistic without doing a lot of work, just creating the shadow. So I'm going to include this part into Christine's photo. So it will save me a lot of time. So I'm going to just duplicate this layer and then just, I'm just gonna drag it on the top here. And then I press Command to select these two layers and Command E is to merge them together. And I'm changing to Move Tool. Remember to select the right layer. This one is the cutout layer. I'm gonna move her to this layer. Okay, so you can see it's a huge difference between the color and the brightness. And I'm going to show you how we can match that. So take a look at this background photo that you can see the shadow is this direction, right? The shadows are all this direction. It's all here, right? So that means the light is coming from this direction. Okay, and take a look at this. The shadow is over here and slight is from top. So it's shadow is all on the bottom and slightly this angle, right? So it's over here. Okay, so that means we have to flip one of the photo because it's two different direction. Okay, so I'm going to flip the background. So I'm going to remove this layer. That's when you composite the photo, it's very important to match the lighting. So I'm going to double click the background layer to become a layer zero. And then I'm going to select Command T on the background layer. Click on any area, just right click on the mouse and then flip horizontal okay so that's much better to match the lighting so i'm going to just take it back to the right size here okay so that's the composite the first method we are going to add a new layer with 50 percent gray we are going to go to edit and fill we're going to fill this layer with 50 percent of gray so content come here and then 50% gray. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to change it to luminosity. And you can start to see the color differences that for example, the background here, the background here and over here to compare these two colors. So this is more blue, this is more yellow. And we can also add another hue and saturation uh, adjustment layer and just bring it right over here so you can see much better, okay? And then just above the layer one, like the two photos, we're going to add adjustment to match these two color, okay, according to this layer. What I did to add 50% gray and also add hue and saturation adjustment layer to add these two is to identify what all the differences. So you can clearly see there's a blue, there's more orange in it. So what we want to do is to adjust Christine's photo towards a more cooler tone. 
like this. Okay, so on the top, we're gonna add curves. Okay, and make sure you click this one. This adjustment clip, the clip to just Christine photo. It won't affect other layer. So here, I'm going to like the red channel because obviously it's too much red, right? I'm going to just reduce it. Okay, so that become, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because it looks greenish now. I'm going to the green layer and just reduce the green. Okay, it doesn't work very well with this one. I'm gonna delete green. So I'm going to the blue layer, just increase blue. Okay, let's see. Wow, okay. So that looks pretty close, right? This two color, apart from that one is much brighter. This one is much more darker. Okay, so I think about here. Let's remove this two to see before and after. Okay, you can see the color match much better. But we do need to do some fine adjustment to it because that still, this looks more blue. This looks a little bit more magenta tone. So I'm going back to the red channel and just try and uh, click on this tool click and drag image to modify curl. Okay, so click on this. I'm going to reduce the red a little bit. So that just a tiny bit, you can see the differences. So that matching a lot better, right? Like this. So that just one method. And of course, we will have to adjust the color. Maybe she needs to be a bit darker, right? So if you see before and after, you can see these two adjustments. It looks tons of better. She's much more fit in the space. It look much more harmony. Like you, you barely notice that she is from somewhere else. I find these double yellow lines are distracting. So I'm going to remove them real quick right now, okay? And we go on to the second method. I'm gonna group these two together. That's the method one. This method is to help you. I added these ad additional layers to help you to identify the color differences. The second method is add a solid color. You can choose any color. Let's go for red. And then I'm going to saturation. Now you can obviously to see the color differences. And this time we didn't have to add the saturation to exaggerate the saturation because with this blending mode, it's very obviously we see the two uh, places, the two grounds are different. Then we use the curve adjustment layer, for example, with this. You see what we just did, it match, right? It match the color much better than before. And this is darkness and brightness. You can see that these two match much better. So let me just do it again for you. And on top of this layer, I'm going to use a curve adjustment layer. You can find it over here. And then I'm going to the red channel and use this hand finger tool and just reduce the redness because I want it bluish tone. Okay, it's about here. I have to clip down, I forgot to clip. So I have to clip this layer only affected to Christine. Okay, and then I'm gonna try to find the color, the red. I think about here is fine. And then I'm going to blue channel just to add the blue. You can see how much it's close right now. Right, that's about right here. And I'm gonna remove this, and you can see these two tones are obviously much closer, right? That's how, that's before, that's after. So the colors matched. So that's the second method here. Just have a solid color fill and change it to saturation. That's the second method. The method three, I'm going to add a curve adjustment layer, curves. Okay, so we are going to add this adjustment clip just on Christine to adjust the color and make sure you select this side instead of the layer mask. Click on here, these lines, menu icon and choose auto options and find dark and light colors, okay? And let's find shadows. So these are pretty dark. I'm gonna choose here and click okay. And the highlights, I think just about here. You can see the color changes already. So I am going to choose the color will match these two the most. Okay, let me see, not just too much. I think about here. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna click okay. 
No. Okay, so that's before, that's after, to match the color uh, of the background. Okay, that do a pretty good job too, but I think it's probably a little bit too strong. And I can always use the opacity to change the strength. Okay, so that's the third method. So I'm going to just make it this invisible and I'm just going to show you the fourth method. It's match color. So I'm going to select this layer. Okay, just Christine. I'm going to image adjustments and select match color. Okay, so you will see, I'm just going to give it the source. The source and layer is zero. Okay, so that's the color it come out with that to match the color background. So actually I am going to reduce the luminous, okay, to bright, intensity to intense. I'm going to do a little bit fade Okay, let's just go over here, intensity. Okay, let's just adjust the intensity just to see these two area. I think that is pretty good. Let me just adjust the little, that's a bit too bright. Let me just come back a little bit and fade a little bit as well. So, okay, so these two, you see these two grounds match much better. You can always make the fine tuning adjustment here to match the two color even better. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Unfortunately, this one, you cannot go back to adjust. With match color, it will apply on the layer it's on. So you cannot go back to adjust it. You, the only way around is to duplicate the layer and choose one of the layer to do the match color effect. With this one, I'm going to go back because I'm going to show you the fifth method just to eyeballing it. The fifth method. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, curves, okay? And then I can see this layer is a little bit more yellow. It's warmer tone, this is a cooler tone. So first thing is I go to blue channel. Okay, I'm going to use this tool so I can just add, drag it up to add blue in it. As I drag it up, I can start to see there are some purplish tone come in. So I'm going to red channel to reduce the redness. Okay, so I'm going to slowly going down here. So that match pretty, pretty well, right? But I can see there are too much blue. So I'm going back to blue and just adjust a little bit like here. Right, okay, so that match pretty well together, right? And only like, I think Christine is a little bit too blue. That's something I would adjust with a different layer. But otherwise, this is pretty much a mission accomplished. And I most probably, I would darken it a little bit to make it darker. So you can see these two area here. I'm keep adjusting this two layer to see here is really matching. And here, probably because of this is a little bit, there is some sunlight cast on, so there's more warm tone towards it. And I can also use this layer. This layer was the adjusting, right? And I can use my brush tool just to um, reduce the opacity to 20%. I'm going to just have, just brush a little bit, have the warm tone come back a little bit. Okay, so just over here. So that is pretty good, right? You can just see like it matching really, really well. So once the color is matched with the, one of the methods, all you have to do is go in to do the fine tuning. Obviously, I will have to go in to edit all this thing out, for example, here, here, to have the grounds to match better together. For example, I can just do very quick like this. Okay, I'm just get a layer mask and then I'm going to use 20% opacity in paint with black brush. Okay, so I'm trying to merge these two areas together. Okay. Okay, just like that. This is a very, very rough how I do it, but actually this is not the way. If you, if you really want the, like a perfect look, this is not the way to do it, but I'm just showing you how you can blend everything together it looks really realistic. Okay, it's roughly like this. If you, if we zoom in to see, it's pretty realistic, right? 
Yeah. Okay, the fifth way is my favorite way, is eyeballing it. Just look at the photo differences and try to adjust it the way. That's the way I use the most, but it really takes a lot of practice to identify the different color. But once you do a lot, you will figure out very quickly what are the differences. You'll be able to adjust them accordingly. And more importantly is, our eyes get used to color and brightness very easily. So it's important to take a break and come back to the photo. You will have a better picture of how it should look like. Does it look realistic or not? Does it match or not? You have a better idea because our eyes can fool us so easily. Okay, so always remember to take a break. Sometimes I will even leave the photo a few days or a week and get back to them and to see if they are really on point, like matching the color or look realistic, etc. And it's important you take time to edit the photo and also give it time, give the photo time and you can digest it and see it with a fresh eye. Give time to the photo editing process. That will benefit you so much because once you go back first time after a few days and the next time after a few days, you will see a better picture. You will be able to adjust it over and over again to meet your expectation. So these are the five methods how you can match color in different photo composites. There are five different methods you can explore and you don't have to remember it. Or you can always save this video as a playlist so you can always come back to see this method and what layers you should add and what blending mode you should add. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you find value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. We will be uploading more helpful tutorials. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out any. And I will see you in the next episode.